What's up? Today I'll be checking out a Speedmaster dual plane high rise Vortex small box Chevy intake. See for yourself, it is well packed. Came in a box, in a box, in a cardboard sleeve, in another box, and inside there it's in a bag. So that's five layers. <laughs> FYI, I started this video last winter. After the following clip, I'll explain. It's a bit rambly, but I hope you enjoy it. Where to begin? First off, this video is not sponsored. Second, I bought this Speedmaster intake on Black Friday. They have some really good sales on their own stuff on their own website on Black Friday. I bought stuff there in the past and I'll, I'll get to that later. But this intake I think was close to close to $200, I want to say. And I paid $116 or $117 shipped. Well, I, I paid $126 or $17, $127 shipped because I bought something else for $10. But you get the point. Anyways, let's get to the intake. Over here, I pulled it out when I got it. And looked at it, I saw it was wrapped in plastic. The plastic bag's in there, so you have to trust me on that. And I'm like, yeah, it looks fine. But as soon as I removed the plastic bag today, I found some issues. We'll start off with the carburetor pad. And let's see if the camera picks this up. You can feel the defect there. Over here, over here, and pretty good over here. I mean, I don't know. Let's see if we can get a. Like I've already checked it with a straight, straightish edge, and you can see some light. I don't know if this is going to pick up on the camera really that well. Let's try right there. Oops. Yeah, you can see where the light stays in the same spot when we move the straight edge. So, this carburetor pad is not flat. Not perfectly flat, but close. I mean, if you had a thicker type gasket, you can probably get away with that, because it's not, it's, not, it's not a huge amount. You still, I mean, I probably would still run some sealer on the bottom side of the gasket. You know, not, not RTV, actual gasket sealer, and glue it down just to be safe. If I wasn't going to try and correct it, but if I keep this intake, I'm going to try and correct it and make it a little flatter. So, that's, you know, the first very obvious problem. Moving on, the next issue is I went ahead and I checked all the threads, you know, the, I don't know, this, yeah, it's 5 sixteenths. 3 eighths and half inch NTP and oh, it comes with this um, 3 eighths NTP nipple which by the way I don't know if this is just a Vortec thing but I'm assuming it's, it's for this because the only other Vortec intakes I have also have that same front through hole They're both these eBay Vortec intakes so I don't know let me know in the comments I'm not much of a Vortec guy I'm still new to this Vortex stuff. So anyways, moving on. I checked all the threads, all the threads check out, but one. You cannot start this thread because it is, it is gapped up right here at the top. I don't know if you can see that. And so I have to run a tap in there to fix that. It's not a big issue because I have taps. And you, know, you, you want to use like a, you know, a good tapping fluid so you don't further screw it up. But every other thread checks out. Oh, technically there is one other thread issue. Right down in here, there's, it, it broke through because you know the casting's off or whatever. But use a little bit of sealer, and as this, I want to say it's not uncommon to have some you know seepage through these these bolts, these outer ones for the you know, the water net. I've had in the past, and I'll put the seal on the threads, or I'll put a stud in here and be fine. I like to use a stud because I use like a, a spacer and the water neck. And, yeah. Anyways, moving on. Overall, the casting looks okay. Um, you know, other than so far the machining defects. <laughs> we 
going to the underside. I'll grab this block of wood so it stands up a little better. Right here we have a definite fix. I and mean, this has been like a, you know, it's, it's, it's positive, like it's a bump. So this has been welded up and then ground back, you know, half-assed. It's, it's, it's half-assed fixed. There's no other way to say it, it's half-assed fixed. <laughs> and we got a nice scratch over here that you can feel, but once again, I use a gasket sealer anyway, so I'm not worried about that. And that, you know, it's being positive, I can grind that down. Put some, I'll probably put some RTD around the water ports anyway, so. But for anyone who, you know, who's new to this and just wants to slap this thing on, so far, it's not looking too good. Um, oh, I almost forgot, I, I don't really like these things. I don't know why they have these pressed in plugs. That, that one actually feels kind of a little loose, it moves me. So I don't like those. I probably would have, I probably would have tried, and I don't know if I can get in there. Yeah, I would try and epoxy them or RTV them from the top, just to be, you know, so they don't seep or, you know, if some water gets in there when you're washing the engine, you don't want water seeping in there and just, or whatever, gunk and, you know, mouse, <laughs> mouse fluid, I guess you could say. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> let's continue with the intake over you. <laughs> Mouse fluid. <laughs> it's, it's like barren. <laughs> okay, so on this side, we have a definite casting or, yeah, casting issue, I want to say. Slight casting issue. Whereas the outer pair, each one on the outer side, are shorter. I mean, I measured, compared, you know, this, these inner ones are the same size as the other side, so they're, they're shorter by, you know, you know, whatever, you know, eighth inch or so, or probably, you know, what would it be, yeah, three sixteenths or not, you know, round roughly, so you, but you can grind them out if you, if you need to. I mean, it's better that they're, I guess, a little smaller than a little bigger. The position seems all right. I didn't bring a gasket out. I, I should have, but... You know, I, I already brought up, I already brought out a bunch of stuff, <laughs> which we're gonna get to. This is this video is, is getting longer than I, I planned on. <laughs> so there it is. Overall, quick assessment of the Speedmaster dual plane intake, and it is not looking great. Casting wise, eh. machining wise, eh. I mean, technically. Of all the intakes I have in here right now, this is the cheapest intake I've got. And I bought all these intakes brand new, so. This intake was the cheapest. I mean, these, these, these ones are here probably the second. They were 130-ish or so, maybe, maybe 127. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but they're, they're eBay generic, you know, shorter dual, dual planes. Whereas this is, you know, air gap style, a little, little higher rise, so. You know, 6,500 RPM. 6,000 ish RPM. So, next on the list, I was, I dried out all these intakes. And by the way, I bought every intake in here, those, those, and that, brand new myself. Over here, we got a Dart SHP, two Edelbrock air gap RPMs, and an Edelbrock. EPS. I wanted to compare these intakes because in the past I've compared these intakes, these three right here, these three versions, well, these four, but you know, three versions because it's two of the same. And a quick assessment shows that there's a definite difference between those ones and this one. Now, I know everyone's going to say, buy US. And I, I agree on most occasions. If you're willing to put in the work and fix some of the flaws, you can sometimes save money if it's not too much work. I wasn't expecting to have some of these machining defects as I bought other things in the past, like these spacers right here. Set that over there. And they, they're, they're pretty good. I mean, I'm going to pull one out real quick. And we'll see here real quick. These, well, I'm not going to take it out because it's sealed. These spacers are pretty good. I got a one inch taper and a two inch taper. I bought for a single plane project that I'll get to later. 
And once again, I bought them on Black Friday another year, you know, not this year, for a pretty good price. I also like these, this Pro Camp, Pro Comp, because you know, if you don't know, Pro Comp is the same as Speedmaster, and I like these Pro Comp block off kits because they're cheap and they work good for painting or storage and so on. And they make them in various inches size. So, moving back to the intakes, <laughs> if you want to compare these intakes, we'll move this one back over here for a minute. I would rate these as large, medium, small. Now that's for a plenum size and runner internal size, not the flange, internal, down in the runner, you know, pretty much, you know, roughly throughout it. When I compared this Speedmaster intake, the runners are definitely narrower, and I would say, out of the four versions of intakes I have right here, these 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 intakes, probably the um, third tallest. So this the RPM Gap definitely has the bigger, you know, the tallest and wider runners and the larger plenum of the four intakes. As you can see right here, if I just use my fingers as a, as a rough gauge, Plum definitely appears larger on the Eddie intake. Now, I do have one other point I want to get to about the Eddie intakes. I had issues with both Eddie intakes. I'm not, I'm not a super fan of Eddie. I like the I like the dark SHP. The EPS is fine. I've, I've heard Eddie has fixed some of their casting issues, but. These RPM air gaps I had were, were really rough. I mean, if you you look at the overall casting inside, down in the actual runners, you know, defects wise and stuff, I would say the two Eddies I had, which are older, I bought them more than a decade ago. Yeah, more than a decade ago. They were comparable to, to the Speedmaster. So, you know, once you, you clean up the intake, you know, get it more consistent, it's going to be a lot more work than I found for the SHP. This intake was, it's, it's already cleaned up and stuff, so it's, it's done. It's, you, I can't show you, I can't, I can't time travel. So anyways, this intake took less time, because so it was way more consistent, had less casting flaws than all the intakes. So I really like the, the dark. And uh, the Eddies, I'm not a fan, because there was other problems too. Like I had to fix these bolt holes on both intakes. They're both off and cause up. First, I didn't catch it until I already, when you tighten it down, it distorts the flange and causes these two runners to leak. So, there's that. And like I said, the, the, there was casting issues I had to grind and fix. It's the same as with the eBay intakes. The EPS had a few, wasn't as bad. I'd say it was the second best. The dart was definitely the best for least amount of work and best consistent casting, poor alignment, and so on. These, I corrected it some, but the ports were definitely probably almost worse. I mean, you got these two ports over here. It's comparable to the Speedmaster, so I mean, it's like I said. I don't want to ramble out too much about. I don't want to beat up on too much an Eddie, but they've had issues in the past, and supposedly they, they, they corrected them. Let's get back to the intakes. Okay, so I don't like that. It comes in a nice shiny box, but you know, who keeps the box really other than me for storage, you know? <laughs> um, you got your basic, you know, hello, we're Speedmaster, five year warranty. So, I mean, I don't know, I, I may try and return it. I don't know. And we're instructions online going green and a sticker, you know, hoo hoo. There it is. Um, let me check my cheat sheet here real quick. I want to make sure I put it on Oh, there's nothing I want to touch on. Now, there's an article that compares several intakes. And this is kind of a little off subject. I mean, it, has, it was over 21 dual planes. And if you're really worried about the extra last little 10 ish horsepower, like that you get from this taller intake versus like a shorter intake like this, you got to make sure you have the hood clearance. I mean, there was recently a, recently a, 
a discussion online. I, I just, that's what I wanted to point that out because a lot of people they buy these taller intakes, they, they choke it with you know, too short of air cleaner. They go, they get the drop base, but they still, you know, it's, there's not enough room above the carburetor. So in my personal opinion, don't get a tall intake unless you have a scoop or the hood clearance. So there it is. I guess I'm going to wrap this up. I mean, I wasn't planning on doing it this long, but I dragged everything out. And <laughs> I wasn't planning on finding that many issues with the Speedmaster. I may contact them and see what they, they want to do. I may just fix it. I don't know. It's a cheap intake. I don't plan on using it on a super high performance engine. I just plan on using it on an you know, okay setup. So, eh. I mean, it's, it's on me. Um, let me know if you have any questions or whatnot. Well, I hope you found some of that useful. Now, I almost ended the video there, but I did decide to contact Speedmaster. I figured it would make a better video if I had something to tell you guys. And it took a few tries. I did get a hold of them. I don't remember the full details, but I know it dragged out for maybe about two months. Me calling them, sending them pictures, getting approved, waiting for approval or something to send it back. They did eventually send me a return label, unpaid return label. And at that point, I wasn't feeling well. I decided, you know what, forget it. I just decided to shell the video. I was doing other things. And anyways, I still have the intake. You can see right here, I still have my peace of mind warranty card, which is pretty much not useful. I mean, they say go to their website and read the thing. Maybe I'll throw that up here real quick and you can pause and read it. I would have rather had you know, a good intake than all this fancy packaging. So maybe they need to spend more on quality control, not flashy packaging. Anyways, Speedmaster is an easy target. I'm actually dealing with an issue with these cylinder heads right now by another manufacturer. And I did remember a third Eddy intake that I had a problem with. You see, I had a performer that the intake flanges we're at the wrong angle. So that intake, you know, did not seal and was another, you know, we don't need to go into that anymore. <laughs> I picked on Eddie enough this video, which should be mostly about Speedmaster and their poor quality control. So there it is. Black Friday is upon us again. If you're gonna buy their stuff, try and get major discounts. I still don't recommend anything unless it's gonna be you know, something they can't screw up like those plastic you know, block off plates or, I don't know. <sighs> I figured I would ask you guys, what do you want me to do? Do I send the intake back for an exchange? I mean, I'll have to pay shipping probably, you know, at least one way, probably both ways, who knows. It's they st still, still open to that. Or do I fix it? Because I can fix it. I mean, I think I can, you know, I got an idea of how to fix the flange. I mean, I could send it out and it probably costs about the same as shipping it back to fix the flange. Everything else I can fix myself or it's not a big issue. So, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, if you guys want to see if I get a better intake, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Maybe they'll see this video, maybe they won't. I don't know. There it is. Let's wrap this up. I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. You know, let me know. Leave a comment. Whatever. Keep it real. I'm more annoyed about the Eddie intakes because everyone knows Speedmaster sucks. 